I almost had a meltdown. We've got some fun things prepared in this vlog and quite a few things that I feel like I need to talk about and catch you up on. I literally like made a notes with a list on my phone to make sure that I talked about everything that I wanted to in this vlog. It has been like a two day span of time between when I ended last video and this one, which is not that long, but I feel like I'm in a transformation era. So I've been doing a 24 hour readathon. That's been kind of fun. I've been a lot more slow at it than I thought that I would be, which is fine, but we'll talk more about that later. I've been really trying to focus in on the whole like healing burnout and finding purpose outside of work type of deal for the remaining days that I have unemployed. So there is that, that we will also discuss. I am working to do things by myself. I've like planned several activities that are going on in the next like two weeks or so that are pretty much all solo activities. It's like an adult summer break, except that I'm the only one on summer break. And so everything kind of inherently is going to be um, lonely. <laughs> and honestly, I guess we'll talk more about it later, but honestly, I've been really good about doing things solo. Like I'm very, very introverted and I also feel like I just have gotten used to doing things by myself so I really tried to find things that would actually put me out of my comfort zone because if I were like oh I'm gonna go on a solo date to a coffee shop like that's not hard for me because like I do that all the time but for example this afternoon I'm going to a candle making class but entirely by myself and so I'm excited for the candle making I think that'll be a really cool experience but I also feel like that's the type of environment that probably not everybody will be by themselves maybe it'll just be me by myself and that still kind of makes me sort of uncomfortable so that's going on and then the other thing that we'll talk about is um i went for a run yesterday and i think i'm gonna start like actually running i'm in a big like wanting to set goals and accomplish them type of mood i guess i think it kind of goes hand in hand with the finding purpose outside of work so we'll definitely discuss what my plan for that is how it went everything like that future in the video but i just wanted to pop on and say hi so far this morning i've just been planning for an upcoming series that i'm wanting to do on the channel maybe Maybe, I don't know if videos will have been up and out before this one or not, but the social work helping process series that I want to do, I've been doing a lot of research, like kind of putting together notes, figuring that out. So overall, vibes are high today. Hope you're doing well. I'm glad you clicked on the video and let's get going with it. Come on time, make me First things first, the 24 hour readathon that I've been doing, I've just been starting my timer or my stopwatch whenever I've been reading and the goal is to make it to 24 hours. I kind of thought at first that it would like truly be a readathon. Like on Tuesday, I was just gonna sit down and read the entire day. And on Wednesday, I was just gonna sit down and read the entire day. And I've been a lot slower at it than that. Honestly, cause I was gonna get distracted and I also had like a bit of other work to do. So where I stand right now is 14 hours and 41 minutes, which is a lot of reading, but that's like since Tuesday and today's Friday. So first, I know this was in the last vlog, I finished up Harry Potter the Prisoner of Azkaban, the illustrated version. These are rereads for me, but I haven't reread them since probably like elementary school. I've re-listened to them, but not actually physically reread them. And I've never had the illustrated version. So that was just cute and cozy. On audio, I listened to The Perfect Marriage and I gave it 2.5 stars because it wasn't standout. Like I feel like it was pretty average, but the premise of that one is that a husband is cheating on his wife and is accused of murdering his mistress. And his wife is like the top criminal defense attorney. And she decides, to defend him in the trial. So it was interesting, like it wasn't a bad time, but it wasn't anything stand out and I probably won't be thinking about it, you know, all that often. Then I read Mad Honey because this came so, so highly recommended. Zach got me this book for Christmas and then my mom has recommended it to me. One of my best friends has recommended it to me. I even asked her, I was like, what book should I read next? Like, please just pick for me. And she was like, Mad Honey. And I was like, perfect, because I own it. So in this one, it's told in alternating chapters, points of view. One is Olivia, who is a mom of Asher, who's an 18 year old boy, but Olivia is a beekeeper. I feel like she has depth to her. Like you get to know her. You 
you get to love her. But the other point of view is from Lily and Lily is Asher's girlfriend and Lily in the beginning of the book is found dead and then Asher actually gets arrested and charged with her murder. So we're following that current timeline of like Asher getting charged and everything from Olivia's point of view but then Lily's point of view is from you know before like when she was alive. Super heart-wrenching. It's by Jodi Picot and Jennifer Finney Boylan who I don't actually know but I know they like team wrote the book together. I feel like Jodi is just an exceptional writer. Like her writing style is so 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 good and the characters that she creates are so good and you just really like feel like you know them and you feel invested in them. With that being said this wasn't the best book by her that I've read. I feel like some of her other ones have been good and she I think is just like in love with jaw-dropping twists like just ending a chapter where you're just sitting there like and that happened in this book as well. And I get the twist, but I don't, I don't know. I don't really like the shock value of it. So it wasn't like a perfect book to me. I was really between giving it 4.25 and 4.5 stars. And I'm still kind of between, I don't know exactly which one I get. So I think it's definitely one worth reading, but it wasn't like a favorite of all time. Check the content warnings for this one. Cause there is quite a bit that could be triggering. This took like five hours and something minutes to read. And then I asked on my Instagram story, which of like these options back here that I should have picked up next. And I started Daisy Jones the six by taylor jenkins read because i think like five people voted for this one which is kind of a lot considering how many options there were to vote for so i'm part of the way through it's moving really fast because it's told kind of like in interviews so the words it's not super dense on a page but i'm glad people picked this one because it recently had the like tv series that came out and i want to watch that but i only want to watch that after i read the book so that's current state of the union with that if this is love i'm thinking of that enough i'm hoping she's gone I feel like I'm just doing some work and then getting to talk to you but discussing my running I don't know if this is going to be a long-term goal and it might be something that I do for like a week and then you never hear about it again but I think I always mention how it's like oh I feel like I'm in such a rut I feel like I'm in such a rut and I think for me I really enjoy lifting weights but there's a certain sense of like accomplishment that's missing from it especially because I'm not like powerlifting and trying to make new maxes or anything like that just like with the facilities that are available to me right now and so with running it's like a pretty easy you know thing to just get out and do except for the fact that historically I've not really liked it all that much but honestly basically everyone in my family has run at like some point in their life and like to super duper amounts for example my mom has run multiple hundred milers like ultra marathons my grandpa used to run like the amount of miles that he was turning on his birthday my sisters run a half marathon and so I kind of just felt like hmm I feel like I need something new and then coupled with that I keep seeing on TikTok like I've been so influenced which is funny but I keep seeing on TikTok people being like come for a 10 mile run with me run this half marathon with me or like just like various running content start running with me after I haven't run for a long time which is very much me and there's just something about it that I'm like I am going to try it out and see if this is something that I can find joy in I don't think I'm gonna say like what my goal in my head is yet because it's a very like far-fetched goal but before the end of 2023 I do think I have a certain type of race that I would like to run or like at least participate in but we'll see about it because obviously like I've run for one single day so far so it's very hard to be like yeah this is is my new thing but I've come up with like a little kind of mileage plan type thing to see if I can work myself back up to it and I hope that this can be something that I stick to and that kind of like inspires me and that I can be like yes I accomplished this because I think it's been a long time since I've had that sort of feeling about like physical activities that I can do kind of like how I said with how at the gym it's like okay cool like here I am doing bicep curls but I'm not like trying to get better and measuring it and everything because it's just not as easy as being like oh, okay cool like I just ran 10 miles I didn't. <laughs> Yesterday, my very first run, my goal was to just move for 30 minutes and I definitely got myself walking breaks. I think I ended up taking maybe like three minute long walking break throughout the 30 minutes, which I was pretty proud of myself because I thought that it would be a lot more than that. But I ran 2.24 miles, which took 31 minutes. So it was like, 1347 average pace which is slower than I've ever run before like whenever I used to run a little bit more often three plus years ago but I mean I'm fine with that because I got out and did it I do have new shoes that were supposed to get delivered yesterday because the ones that I'm wearing now I got back in August and have been my like daily workout walks everything shoes so they're really they're pretty burnt out at this point so I was hoping that I'll get my new shoes and that I could like go for my first runs in them but I went with my old shoes yesterday and I'm it was kind of painful <laughs> so I'm really 
really hoping that the new shoes get here today. I don't know if this is something that I'll like continue to talk about as I continue to try to do it or if it'll more be like various check-ins throughout the time, but if you never hear about it again, just know that I gave up. But I'm really, really hoping that this is not something that I give up and that I can achieve a goal. Make me right. Come on time. I almost had a meltdown, which is funny considering <laughs> candle class, but I did just go to the candle class. I'm going to put the montage footage in it afterwards because I didn't get the chance to chat with you before I went in, but I got all ready. I like, got myself dressed up, did my makeup. Everything was really excited for my candle class. And then I go out to my car and I press to unlock it and nothing happened. So I was like, that's kind of strange. But I was thinking, oh, maybe like the remote in my key fob is going weird or something like that. So I manually unlock my door, get in, no lights are on or anything. I go to turn on the car absolutely nothing happens like nothing like it's just pretending I'm not there it's so dead and <laughs> I don't know why I guess I don't think I left the light on or anything it's been a while since I drove my car like maybe Monday and today's Friday so kind of stressed me out a bit um and then I was Two, thinking like like this candle class is in Doraville which is like on the perimeter of Atlanta so it was like 25 minutes away so I was like I'm gonna miss my candle class and now my car is dead I didn't shed tears but like I was getting there like I was just very disappointed and I end up texting Zach I was like you'll never believe it like guess what's happening and he didn't take his car to work today which I didn't know so he had a spare key that I was able to go grab and then I was able to drive his car here and I did end up being able to go to my candle class but I was stressed and now it's an hour and a half between like so we just finished it's an hour and a half and then I come back to pick it up because it'll be dry by that point so I think I'm gonna go to a bubble tea place that's kind of nearby and while I'm there I brought a book just in case and I figure I'll come up with some sort of plan of like who can jump my car the last time this happened to me I still was a student at Alabama and they had this like wonderful service where they would just like help you fix your car <laughs> and so people would like come to me and jump it and I ended up having to get a new battery back then so this battery is I think four years old which I think should be fine for batteries so I'm hoping it's just like like a regular oh it died type thing <sighs> but I also wish it wasn't happening but I also am trying to count my blessings and the fact that the fact that it happened now like yeah it'll be something to deal with but also it's not like oh I'm trying to get to jail every day and like don't have a car to do so because that would have been a lot harder to work out but the fact that like Zach just happened to take the bus to work today and so his car just happened to be there so I just happened to have this like extra car that I could actually come out here and do the candle class like definitely counting my blessings but I was definitely stressed anyways I'll put the little montage footage of the Kindle class and then I'll head to get some bubble tea and sit and figure out who I'll get to jump my car. So the candle class itself, I was nervous going in because as I mentioned earlier, I felt like this was the type of thing that usually you do with people and obviously I wasn't. But they asked me when I went in, they were like, oh, okay, like you're the only one on your booking. And I was like, yep, just me. And they were like, okay, just wanna check like if you're doing a solo date, like would you like to sit at a table with other people or would you just wanna sit at a table by yourself? And I was like, I'm fine sitting with other people. But I thought it was cute that they asked that because like if I really was trying to have some like, you know, alone time or something like that. So I sat with two other people who were so nice. Like we ended up chatting basically the whole time. but. I picked my scents. I got peach magnolia and white linen. So it smells like a beautiful summer day, like a coastal house, the window open breeze coming in. That's what it smells like. And it was just a fun, like little kind of mix it up pour type thing. And I really loved it. And I'm excited to see it when it's dry.
it's just kind of funny and it's definitely not going to end up happening but i do keep checking the taylor swift eras tickets because she's in atlanta today tomorrow and sunday i was like if prices drop like significantly day of like i would drop everything and go to a marta station and head over to mercedes-benz now i'm not trying to drop the prices that they currently are on it because remember no income right now so but i keep refreshing StubHub because right now it is less than two hours and they still have some tickets left so that's when i was like i mean if you want people to buy them might as well drop the prices but the cheapest is still 600 which i know is a lot cheaper than some people paid but it's like 600 for being behind the stage so it's not quite at the region that i would do it but i am willing if it does get to that region I want to show you my candle they said that it has to wait four days before burning it it smells amazing oh they put the label on lopsided but i did i think i told you this i forget but i did a white linen scent and a peach magnolia scent and i named it unemployment it smells so good that was fun i didn't realize how excited that i was for this until i almost didn't get to go Everyone in the comments say, thank you, Zach, for your car. I can't decide when I'm going to call someone to jump my car. Because, like, right now it's Friday at 4.37 p.m. And there are 24-hour services, but, like, I, I don't know. <sighs> we'll just, we'll address it when it feels like it's time. I do plan on going for a run. I think I'm going to go when it gets a little bit more into the evening. Maybe cools off a little bit. Overall, today's not exactly what I was hoping, expecting it would be. But it, like, has ended up being still okay, even with that. It's just the car problems. Car problems always get a girl, you know? morning happy saturday i feel like i've had an eventful morning so far this wonderful neighbor and his child came to help me jump my car and i like i'm not kidding when i said it was so so dead i think i mentioned that yesterday but they had like one of the portable batteries and it had to be hooked up for like a very long time before it would even like give a light and so the last time i got my battery replaced was four years ago which i thought that meant that it should still have a couple years but i called the people at my car place and they were like four years could be like some batteries last for longer than that but it could be coming up to where it is like no longer good and since i don't want to be in the place where i was like keep having to jump it until i decide that oh finally okay maybe there's actually a real problem going on i went and dropped my car off at my car place today and they're going to run a little diagnostic and let me know if the battery is good or like what went on there it was so weird though when my car actually turned on because like it was so foreign like it did not feel like my car anymore the temperature was in celsius like it turned on to am radio like settings that i never have my car on it showed that it was like 2014 which it usually is off but so i took it to the car place and then zach just came and picked me up but there was like some mean time so i went to the only coffee shop that was like within walking distance and it was this joint bike repair and coffee shop like their cafe area you could get like espresso drinks and like cliff bars like that was <laughs> those were the options but they also had like board games and legos and puzzles so it seemed like a cool place but i yeah zach picked me up i just dropped him back off at work no idea what the rest of the day will look like no idea when they'll get to my car because they said the test would be pretty quick but like they're pretty booked with appointments today so they weren't sure exactly when they would get to it but the good part is that like as you know unemployed don't have anywhere to be i did have some fun plans that i was like hoping i'll get be to be able to do like going for a hike a couple of hours away um i wanted to take like a solo day trip to athens and i don't know if those will happen anymore because i don't know if i'll have a car but we'll make the best of it <laughs> Thank you. 
the car update is that nothing showed up wrong on the like little diagnostic test that they did so it probably was just a fluke time that it died which i'm getting better about my car anxiety but like it still shows up every now and then i honestly feel like the biggest factor that has made me better about my car anxiety is the fact that i have a savings account so like <laughs> i feel more cushion as far as that goes because like in college i was stressed like i had car anxiety and so i think it, whenever things happen like this it just kind of pops back up again and then i kind of have to use you know positive self-talk make sure that i'm not what's the word catastrophizing Cata catastrophizing 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 have to make sure i'm not doing that but i just spent hours pulling hours upon hours at my coffee shop i'm really working hard on this like educational video series that's coming out that i'm pretty sure will have already started coming out before this video so the like helping process one that i mentioned earlier in this video i feel like that's background work that's not always seen because i do like making the like educational social work type videos you know the sit down ones and i know that people have even said like sometimes they'll be shown or assigned for their classes which is absolutely crazy please call me by my proper title professor anna but there really is so much time poured into like the front end of it because i never want to make like an educational video without knowing that i know what i'm talking about so i do lots of research i like take all kinds of notes and then trying to organize it and then not only making sure that i know what i'm talking about but trying to make sure that it can be as clear and like accessible of information as possible so there's a lot of work but it is like fun work and i also feel like especially now that i'm out of school it kind of puts me back into that learner paper type mindset which is fun you know it's kind of like working an old muscle so i'm excited about that i think i might film those later today right now i'm gonna stop by the library and pick up holds and return books which i think do i do that every vlog i feel like i do that every video so i guess this is just our daily stop by the library time and then let me tell you about the bone that i have to pick bone to pick with ups because i ordered my new hokas which i think i told you because like with my running i was like okay my new shoes are supposed to get here on thursday today is monday they still haven't gotten here and it was like they were out for delivery on thursday i was home all day thursday they were out for delivery and then i got a notification at the end of thursday night that was like recipient refused delivery we'll try again tomorrow and i was like mm, recipient did not refuse delivery because i was here all day nobody ever knocked the door nothing and also it's a pair of tennis shoes like you can leave it at the doorstep oh like that seems strange same thing on friday they were out for delivery i got a notification like your delivery should be delivered today i was like oh wonderful and then it was recipient refused delivery again and i was still like i was home all day like i did not and it was saying like i think on friday it was like 12 57 p.m and i was like i know for positive that no one was trying to knock on my door at 12 57 p.m and so then on saturday i got a notification that was like your shipment will be rerouted to the nearest ups pickup point and i was like oh, okay because it was going to go to a cvs that's not too far away so i was like okay sounds good but it wasn't going to actually try to go there until today monday so I was like okay we're already waiting five days past when they were supposed to be delivered and i'm i'm really just bummed because i'm so excited to try them out and to run in them because like like i said old faithfuls are kind of dead and so i was like tracking it today because i got another out for delivery headed to that cvs and then it says that delivery was unavailable at that cvs when like that's their own pickup point like it was the ups pickup point at that cvs so how are you going to tell me that they couldn't deliver to their own place and so now i don't know what's going to happen and i feel like eventually what's going to happen like i can't complain to hoka because hoka did the right thing like they sent them out it's just now ups is not giving me my package i'm gonna start following around ups trucks banging on the door hello are my shoes in here but i feel like what's going to happen eventually is it's going to be like oh return to cinder we couldn't deliver it when i guess you could sorry i feel annoyed at them i just really want my new shoes <laughs> especially because now all the money is out of my account for my new shoes so i feel like i'm hurting financially for my new shoes but i'm not even benefiting off my new shoes yet and that was something that originally i was only going to get new tennis shoes after i started my new job because i was like okay like i'll get my first paycheck and then i'll get new shoes but then with the running i was like okay i'm gonna get new shoes and then just like wait for that first paycheck and cross my fingers and it's not meant to be <laughs> I was sitting around stewing and I was this close to making a video. You know how one of the recent ones is this video ends when I get a job. I was about to be like, I'm going to make this video ends when I get my hokas because I'm never getting my hokas. They're never getting delivered. Um, but I got a text that they actually did make it to the pickup location and they said they were ready for pickup. So I'm trying not to get my hopes too far up because I feel like there's still time for me to, you know, something go wrong by the time I drive over there. But theoretically, I'll be getting my hokas so I can tone down the drama. I can tone down the anger. <laughs> And my run today could be in new shoes. Won't it stink if I hate them? I'm gonna try not to even like think of that as a possibility, but I've been hyping these up. This is the chance, whoa. 
This is the chance that UPS has to redeem themselves. I have not opened it yet. Oh, it's a Hoka box inside. I did get a little worried for a second because the package felt pretty light. <laughs> I was like, what if it's like not even shoes in here? Time to fly. Don't, don't. Don't, don't. I'm gonna get these dirty. I'm gonna get these so dirty. They look nice though. I hope they feel nice too. They are a lot lighter than the ones that I currently have. So the ones that I currently have, I think are the Arahi sixes, if I am not mistaken. And these are, these are Rincon three, Rincon three, because I took a little quiz and it said that this would be the best for me. I'm not gonna lie. These are a lot less structured than shoes that I have liked in the past. In the past, I have liked Asics and they are structured like all the way up here. So we'll kind of see how the little toes do. We'll kind of see how they hold up everything they do feel light but it says soft and light meets fast i don't know if they know who they're working with when they say that but i will try them out today ups i'm sorry it did take a long time to get these but you did come through in the end The new shoes were not perfect, but they were fine for the run. I think that just no shoe is going to give me the arch support that I fully need. So I did go ahead and bite the bullet and got like the previous little arch support inserts that I used to wear in shoes because I guess it makes sense that like if the last time I went, also I, I'm fully cognizant of the fact that earlier this vlog, I was like, I don't even know if I'll talk about running that much. <laughs> Pulled your leg on that one. I've always had low arches. It used to be really painful. And so I used to wear these like arch inserts. And then I don't know if I just stopped doing things that caused hurt in my foot or if some muscles got stronger, I don't know exactly what happened, but I think for running, it's just going to exasperate any kind of pain. And so honestly, the run really, really hurt in the feet regions. And also I live in a super hilly area. Like there is not a single piece of flat land around me, but I am kind of finding joy in the struggle of the runs, which is cool. And maybe like is the whole point. So I was able to push through on the run. I ended up running 2.68 miles, which is the longest I've gone so far, which took 32 minutes. Minutes, so an average of 12 minutes, six seconds per mile. Still slower than I ever would have run previously, but I'm enjoying the process of it now. Also, I have officially finished Daisy Jones in the six. I, this did not hit for me like I've seen it hit for other people. Basically, it's told in interview style, so you get to know all these different characters, and it's the story of like a band forming and then like why they broke apart. And I just didn't find myself feeling that connected to the characters. I didn't feel like much happened. I could see where this would make for a good TV series. I just didn't get the same feeling from other Taylor Jenkins read books that I've read, and it just kind of felt slow. I just wanted to get done with it. So it's not like it was a bad book, but it was just pretty average if not a little bit less than, in my opinion. Going to the entirely opposite end of the spectrum though, I've read all of Emily Henry Happy Place since we talked last, and this one, oh, it was so good. So I read Book Lovers back in November, and when I finished Book Lovers, like immediately pre-ordered this book, because I was that excited for it, and Emily Henry had me like by the throat. I really enjoyed it, I really enjoyed the setting, I enjoyed the people, always good banter with Emily Henry. I do think I like Book Lovers more than this one. I think my rating right now goes Book Lovers, happy place, beach read, people we meet on vacation. So because it's not the same level as book lovers, I'm giving it like a 4.75 stars, which is annoyingly close to five without quite being five, but I did really enjoy it. It was really good. And then maybe this part can go without saying if you didn't realize it, I did decide to cancel the solo dates that I had for myself that were coming up. Obviously went to the candle class, you saw that, but I had mentioned earlier in the video that I was planning like an Athens day trip. I wanted to go on a hike that was a couple hours away and I found myself kind of being relieved when I decided not to go on those anymore like whenever my car had died which has been fine now since then so hopefully it was just a fluke time but I found myself being relieved and so I was like if I'm putting pressure on myself to do these kinds of activities thinking like oh I have to make the most of my time while I have time oh I have to have something to show for it and I just think that me making those plans maybe wasn't coming from the most like not purest of intentions because like they are pure intentions but was coming from a feeling the need to make my unemployed days fit a certain type of picture instead of just like oh 
sitting at home alone so i do think i'll talk more in the next video i kind of thought i would in this one but i think i'll talk more in the next video about like what i've actually been doing to heal burnout and like try to find a purpose outside of work while i've been unemployed because and i've mentioned this in past videos like at the end of march and in the months leading up to that like i was not doing well just as far as burnout goes and spending so much time in a work environment that i wasn't enjoying and i even feel like saying wasn't enjoying is like not strong enough of a phrase for the feelings and the experience so i think i'll push that to the next video just so there's more time and can kind of focus on it more thanks for taking some minutes out of your day though to join me in this video as always i appreciate you i hope you have so many reasons to smile in your day and i'll see you next time